What is going on, everybody? I think it's been about 32 minutes since I last talked about a G-CAM port for Surface Duo 2. So I'm going to give you a quick update today because a few things have changed and there might be a better option out there for you to use. If you do not know what on earth I'm talking about, obviously Surface Duo 2 has a much bigger emphasis and, and a bit more concern paid to the camera setup in general. We went from having a single selfie shooter on the inside that you'd flip around and try and take a picture that way with, which was terrible and never worked right and it didn't look good, to now having that normal selfie camera, but also a standard ultra wide and a telephoto lens all on the backside, which does present itself as a rather sizable camera bump. But at any rate, the photos that this thing produces are light years ahead of the photos produced by the original Surface Duo, which is right there. And because of that, I think it was a good decision to put the camera bump on there. That's a whole different discussion that can be had at a later date. But what is Gcam? So basically what people have been doing is they've been taking the camera app from Google Pixel devices, the software magic that allows Google to use a 12 megapixel camera and take photos that look better than almost anyone else's and then porting that over to other devices. And basically, you just go to a particular website, you download the APK, you install it. The thing might pop up and ask you to allow Edge or your browser permission to install, whatever, allow, install it. And you've got a new camera app that will take pictures that will look different than your stock camera app. Now, the website that everyone uses is this one here. I'll have a link to all this stuff in the description, but it gets really complicated because you can see all these different Gcam builds that are designed for all these different devices, and a lot of them, most of them, will not work well with the Surface Duo 2 at all. They're going to be super buggy and weird, and the different lenses aren't going to work well. So I've been trying to kind of organize a bit which ones are working better than others. And I've talked about several in the past already, but there is another new one that got posted on Reddit. And again here, credit to the Owl Demon Stolos for putting this together. And there are instructions here. So you're not just going to install it. You're going to install it and then you're going to go to the link in the description and you're just going to do this. And it's very simple step-by-step -step instructions. If you can read, you can do this. Put the instructions on one screen of your duo and the camera app on the other. Follow these instructions and you will be off and running. And the cool thing about this Gcam port is you actually do have access to all three of your lenses. So the first thing you're going to notice when you open this thing is that for whatever reason, the viewfinder, the preview does not extend as far as it should. And because of this, the viewfinder, it's just, it's squished. It's squished and it looks weird. But don't worry, after you take the picture, the picture is going to look totally normal. After you follow the instructions in that Reddit thread, you're going to see a series of options over on the side. And I'll show you what it looks like when I switch to a different lens. It will literally close and then reopen with that lens. And that is a little bit weird. It's a little bit annoying. But hey, if the pictures actually look better, then maybe that's not a big problem for you, right? If the photo quality is better, maybe that's worth enduring. Now, one thing you can immediately assume with any Gcam port, and this is what I've talked about in the past, is that night low light performance is going to be wildly, wildly better. So another port that I've talked about also was found on a Reddit thread here. And I'll have a link, a proper link, because this link is actually broken. So I will make sure I have a proper link to the most updated version in the description of this video as well. This one is, it's it's better in some ways, but it's worse in some others. So let's close out of this camera and we will go to this other Gcam port, which I just failed to tap. And what you're gonna notice here is that, yeah, it does say 1X and 2X, but that is a digital zoom. You do not have access to your other lenses. However, everything looks normal. And this, the pictures this takes looks different than the one I just now showed you. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to basically allow you to see for yourselves what the stock app looks like as far as the pictures it takes, what this new one looks like, which is actually called Camera V4, as well as a couple of examples of how this other Gcam port that I've talked about by MGC, how it kind of compares as well. I know this is gonna be a lot, but this will kind of maybe help you decide, should I stick to the stock camera app? Should I try Camera V4? Or should I do what Shane's been doing, which is use the stock camera app all the time, except for when I'm going to take a night photo and then I'm gonna use the Gcam by MGC, which is the one that I just showed you last. This is a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I also do want to just let you guys be able to see what it's like launching these apps, these three camera apps stock. I want to show you the settings I have enabled on the one that it is relevant to, and then I'm going to show you the shutter speed because that's something that a lot of people had problems with on the original Duo. I've seen some complaints about shutter speed on Duo 2 stock apps. I'm going to show you what that looks like and we'll run through them. So I'll show you here that nothing is running. All right, so let's launch the stock app. Let's take a picture. Not too bad. Let's take a few pictures. I don't really have a huge issue with shutter lag on my device, but maybe it's something that you'll see. Let's go ahead and close this so that we're not eating up RAM, having three camera apps running all at once. Might get a little bit weird. Don't want to give anybody a disadvantage. Let's go to camera V4. Opens pretty quickly. Again, we see that uh, squished thing going on. It is trying to use night sight by default. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. We're going to say well, we only want that to be there uh, we manually enable it. I also do want to point out, though, that for all these pictures, you'll see there's HDR plus off on and then there's HDR plus enhanced. I have been using HDR enhanced because that gives the best looking images, the most dynamic looking images. So keep that in mind while we're using, uh, while we're looking at these pictures. Let's see how long that takes though. There was quite a bit of a lag there. So let's do it again. So what you're seeing is it's actually looking for focus. And then once it finds it, it takes the picture. That's pretty slow. But if we turn off enhanced to just HDR plus, that is a whole heap of a lot faster. But again, the picture quality will suffer a little bit. And honestly, it's going to suffer to the point that you're going to basically have to use HDR Plus Enhanced. And I will show you why I'm saying that. With HDR Plus Enhanced on, look at the uh, little screens there with it turned off, just regular HDR Plus. They're totally blown out. You can't see them. So you're going to want to run HDR Plus Enhanced on the camera v4 app so now let's jump over to the mgc camera app which this is a little bit confusing you'll see because the icon is almost identical to the stock camera app what you're going to see is this one's all blue this one is a blue to purple uh, gradient so look for the all blue one and you'll see how quick that does launch and then uh, again uh, night mode is trying to automatically turn itself on we're going to disable that and let's take a couple pictures here Almost no shutter lag at all. But again, you're going to run into a similar problem. Those screens are totally blown out. So that's stuff that we're going to talk about, exposure and so forth as we move forward. But for now, that gives you an idea of, of shutter lag and what setting you should be using and how quick it is to launch each of these apps. All right, so let's take a look here at my photo samples because what I did is I just went outside and took a picture with one app, picture with another app, and we're going to look at them. So this first image here was taken by the stock camera app. And I don't think that this looks too awfully bad, if I'm being honest with you. If we zoom in here, I think the biggest difference you're going to see when we go to the camera v4 is the exposure. I think that this looks quite good. The shadows are retained, but I think this is going to be kind of something you're either going to like or you're not going to like. This looks pretty natural. Let's go to the camera v4, and you're going to see that it brightened up everything. You can still tell, obviously, that this is a shadowed area, that this is not a, a well-lit area, but it is much, much brighter than what we're getting from the stock camera app. This is going to be a point of preference. It's a little bit warmer, and it's a little bit brighter. You're going to notice that detail is going to be largely about the same. Let's let that clear up. Detail's fine. There's some grain, obviously, because it's in some shadowed area. Let's go back to the original. We'll zoom in and let you see the same area. Detail is really, really similar. It's, it's going to be basically the color temperature and the uh, exposure, how much it's brightened up that undercarriage of my carport there. Now, for a third option here, the MGC port, which I've talked about in the past that I use exclusively for night photography, this is what it looks like. It's, it's similar to the camera V4. It's actually a little bit even brighter than that. I think it's too bright. My personal preference, I can go back and forth between these two. The stock and the camera V4. I think that the MGC one that I use for night mode is, is entirely too bright. 
So here is a kind of an up close sh shot of this weird igneous looking rock that I don't understand where it came from that I dug up in my backyard. Um, this is the stock app. This is the camera V4. If you can see a major difference between these two, I'll be, I'll be a little bit surprised. This is this slightly warmer, ever so slightly warmer, I guess. Let's zoom in, let this clear up. Detail is fine. Looks pretty good. Camera V4. Maybe slightly cooler in temperature. Detail is pretty much identical. So not a big change there. This is the stock camera app as well. I like using the shot because this red, as well as the fence, the green, there's lots of colors here to kind of judge based on. And if we go to camera V4, looks really, really similar. There's really not a huge difference here. If, if there's any difference, it's the camera V4 is a little bit brighter once again. Look at the color of the red here. Did we lose our shadow? Did we lose the sense of this being a bit in shadow, a bit in shadow? Did we lose a bit of that? Maybe. So for me, I'm actually, if there's a difference, it's really slight. And in this image, I prefer the stock camera. So here's a leaf in the backyard. And, and for whatever reason, I failed to match up the pictures. And this was actually something that is worth talking about. I think this looks quite good. Let's zoom in. We'll get some detail there in that little hole rotting out of the leaf. I think this looks quite good. Now with the camera V4, I got too close because it was hard for me to, to really match them up because the viewfinder was squished and weird looking. So they're not quite the same shot. But again, the detail is really, really similar. And in this shot, as this clears up, I'm closer so you can see a bit more detail, but I don't think it's any real difference. The color temperature is really similar, but again, it's the exposure. Look how dark this looks. Compared to that, look at the darkness around these leaves and around these leaves. I think it's more, there's more contrast in this picture. There are more shadows. This camera seems to just be pulling the shadows all the way up where there just aren't any. So this is a preference. Do you like seeing shadows? Do you not like seeing shadows? We'll keep moving. So I tried using portrait mode, right? So portrait mode on the stock app works on anything. And it worked on my dog here with the camera V4. Portrait mode failed completely. It didn't even try. It just took a regular picture. So if you use portrait mode on other things, this might be important to you. And I do like using portrait mode on other things because I took this picture with my Surface Duo 2 for a thumbnail and I used portrait mode and it turned out really good. So you don't have that option with camera V4. Now going to the selfie camera for portrait mode. This is the stock camera. Um, again, get a good look and feel of that. We'll zoom in. Can you see the detail in uh, the beard hairs there? How clearly you can see then you can tell I've, I've got long hair so it's a little tough to get the cutout correct but you can see how it did camera v4 is a bit more blurred right so the blur is more aggressive it got more of my hair incorrect which one do you prefer this is gonna be a point of preference this is brighter harder blur actually this kind of got this bit of hair kind of weird as well so you be the judge of that. Which which portrait mode on a human selfie camera do you prefer? I guess I should show beard hair detail. Maybe is that a little bit softer? Is that a little bit softer, a little bit, little bit less detailed? I believe it is. So this is a little more sharpened. Okay, so this is a corner in my house that I use a lot because everything, most cameras get this stuff kind of weird. So this is the stock camera app. This is the camera V4. They are very, very similar. This is slightly cooler and the Colors probably slightly more accurate. We turn the lights off. This is the stock camera app, and this is where it really does fall apart because this looks uh, really, really bad. The details are terrible. We go to camera V4, and it is a whole heap of a lot better as that clears up. Now, I want you to understand that the camera MGC that I explicitly use just for night mode is going to give you a very similar experience to this as well. So night mode, definitely much better. But this is where things get interesting for me. So this is the stock camera app. This is a big tree in my backyard that I love to use for pictures like this. And look at, look at how clear and bright this is. So we've already talked about how the stock app seems to retain the shadows a bit more, but in this instance, camera V4 kind of loses its mind on these shadows. So stock app, you can see that, you know, the color of these leaves, you can see the bark. We go to camera V4, and we, it just doesn't look vibrant at all. These leaves look way darker. This, the, the bark itself looks way darker. 
for me, for my money, I think that's a way more interesting picture. And I think that's closer to the reality. It doesn't quite look that... I know that it's super overcast in this picture, but the clouds are all white. The sun is, is out. It doesn't look quite that gloomy. It's a bit more like that to my eye. And then if we use the camera MGC, that again, for the umpteenth time, I use for night mode, it looks really, really bright. So that camera seems to just really like to, to brighten everything up. I think it's actually brighter than the stock camera is, but I didn't quite meter it in the same place. So it's hard for me to say 100% because I didn't get the fence in both of them, but it's definitely brighter than the camera V4. As we move to the telephoto with the stock camera app, the same trends remain pretty much in place. Look at the color, the brightness of these leaves. Look at the detail and the color, the brightness of the bark here as we go to camera V4, it's just toned down, right? So this is a preference, whatever you're gonna prefer here. I tend to actually like the stock camera on this tree all the way around so far. The detail is fine, sure, but if we look at the, at, at the detail and the color, the brightness on the leaves and on the bark, it's just a little bit muted compared to the stock app, and I prefer the stock app here. And going to the ultra wide, look at the color of the fence. And as we zoom in here, this is probably the worst lens on Surface Duo 2, but get a look at it here. It's pretty muted. This, this is a pretty muted looking picture overall. And on camera V4, it's even more muted. It, effectively, you can make almost no detail out here at all in the tree. I think that in this instance, the stock camera is, is wildly better. Look at the grain and the color on the, on the barn comparatively. I think the stock camera is way better there. So as far as like video performance goes, it's bad on both of them. They're really similar. Um, image stabilization is really bad across the board. Don't know what's going on with OIS with Surface Duo 2, but it sucks no matter what app you're using so far. But as far as photography goes, I think that gives you a pretty good idea. So what I'm going to do in the box down below the like button is I'm going to put a link to camera V4. I'm going to label it that because that's what I call it over over in this video. I'm going to put a link to the MGC camera, which... Again, I mentioned over and over. I'm also gonna put a link to that MGC camera app using night mode so you can see a bit of that because I've got a prior video with that stuff as well. So hopefully you guys can then make a decision of how you wanna go about things. Like I've already said, I use the stock camera app for everything and then I use the MGC app if I'm gonna have to take a picture that's in the dark. And for me, that's been totally fine. Now, I do know some people are using that camera V4 app as their primary or only camera app. But there you go, there's the information for you, some sample shots and some links. For you to decide yourself what camera app you want to be using. I need to do the same thing as this for Surface Duo. I need to go look and see if they've found, and anyone's come up with a G-Cam that's any good for the original Duo because it's been a long time since I've looked. If you know of one that's any good for the original Duo, let me know in the comments down below so that I can research and bring it to you guys just like in this video. So guys, Thanks for making it to the end of this video. Stay tuned for the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.